Rwandans more than most understand security. This is the third parliamentary election since the genocide, and although that was almost 20 years ago, its legacy still lies at the heart of politics here. That's why the party that's controlled the government since the bloodletting ended is almost certain to win an overwhelming majority. A relaxed president, Paul Kagame, cast his vote. His job wasn't up for election, but much of the Rwandan Patriotic Front's popularity depends on his leadership. I don't think there is ever an easy win, but a win is a win, so I, I just hope uh, and believe that RPF will win. The RPF has turned Rwanda into one of Africa's most dynamic economies, but it is such a dominant force that other parties complain there is almost no space for opposition. Boniface Twagiramana thinks it's more sinister than that. His party leader is in prison for promoting genocide ideology, a charge he believes is an excuse to silence genuine opposition. He says the other parties are in bed with the RPF. They, they arrange themselves how they can share the place in the political uh, op position, but they are not really political opposition parties. They are, the umbra they are working in the umbrella of LPF. Still, this closely monitored election seems to have been relatively trouble-free. Observers reported no incidents of violence or attempts to interfere with the poll, either at the ballot boxes or during the campaign. The count is relatively simple. Voters simply choose between party lists, not individual candidates, a feature designed to avoid potentially violent struggles for power. This vote count isn't the end of the matter. There are still 24 seats reserved specifically for women, two for the youth and one for disabled, and those will be decided in separate elections over the next few days. We won't know the final makeup of Parliament until the end of the week. But the RPF will win the election. They took 78% of the vote the last time around, and there is nothing to suggest their support has eroded. Peter Gresta, Al Jazeera, Kigali.